Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the third Android tutorial. Today we're going to talk about uh, intense. I wanted to say that like really intensely, but I just failed. Anyways, um, what is an intent? Uh, very simply, it is an abstract description of an operation to be performed. Well, that makes no sense. Well, if you look out on images, you'll see this beautiful little flowchart. You have activity A and you want Android to do something. Let's say you want to launch another activity, meaning you intend to do something. That's why it's called an intent. You intend to do something. So you take that intention or intent, shove it over to the Android system. The Android system says, yeah, I'll allow it. It takes the intent and then actually creates the activity. So you take your intentions and then put it into an activity. The activity then can fire information back. So that's what we're really going to explore today is how to play around with activities and intents. And hopefully this video doesn't end up being like extremely long because I'm actually kind of hungry. Let's call this uh, app three. And we're just going to do that and empty and finish. And it'll computate the rotation of the earth or do whatever. I don't know. All right. So there we go. We have our layout. And here's our activity. And as we discussed in the previous tutorial, that this will be our default activity through the manifest. You can see we have a main and a launcher here. So here we go. We're going to get rid of that just because I don't want it. And we're going to put some buttons on here. And we're going to see how much of this I can do from memory here. So we're going to say BTN start. I already failed. All right. So update usages. Yes. And we're going to say btn result. And let's call this result. So we have two buttons here, start and result. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start another activity when we click these things. The difference is going to be start will just start the activity and we don't care what it does. Result will start the activity, but then we want to know what it did. We want some sort of feedback from that thing. So we're going to actually go into our app and make yet a new activity. And let's just make a empty activity here. And let's call this, um, I don't know what to call this. Customer, why not? I'm hungry, so my brain is like fried. So we have our customer activity now. And see how it's just a blank activity, not to be confused with the one that we have, our main activity. And on here, we are going to drag and drop a button. We'll call this uh, BTN close. Close. So just very simply, and we'll just, uh, let's just say, feed me, because I'm like starving. Oh my gosh, I wasn't really hungry until like two minutes before I sat down to do this video, but I really want to do this. So feed me, kind of weird, but whatever. So when we look at our manifest now, you see we have a new activity here. Well, we need to tell Android what to do with that activity. So we're just going to grab this intent filter. Remember in the last tutorial I said you could take an intent and filter it, and that's what we're going to do here. Say so customer, and we're going to call this default. What's the difference between main launcher and customer default? Well, customer is following the name of the customer. We're saying this is an Android intent action is customer. Think of this as like a, I don't want to call it a namespace or a class path. I forget while I'm on the spot making the video, I forget what it's actually called, but it's like a fully quantified name. Think of it like a web address almost. It's a location within your program. Um, then we have category default meaning it's not a launcher it's just a default activity it's nothing special we're gonna close that out now we're gonna write some code here and I'm really particular about how these are set up so we're gonna say whoops I cannot type tonight either it's private static button ATN start. BTN results. So we got our two buttons. And we are going to wire these things up and have them actually do something. So let's go 
private void on start clicked and we're gonna say on result clicked now there's an easier way to do this um, but I like kind of doing it the old school way the easier way is so you guys can go out and Google this is you actually select your button you go out here and then there is a I think it's on click or something you can add a little element but then it's got to have special properties and things and it was actually kind of confusing I just like doing it the old way um, so we're going to actually take this and we're gonna go uh, btn start equal and we're gonna cast this to a button and we're gonna call something called find view by ID um, and this takes a little bit of explanation find view by ID when you look at your activity you have your activity and then you have views so pretty much anything inside of an activity is a view so a button is a view a text box is a view a checkbox is a view a spinner blah 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 they're called views why that's what Google decided to name them so what we want to do is find a view a button by its ID well we need to take the R variable which we discussed in the last tutorial we're gonna say ID and we're gonna say button start what is this effectively doing we're taking our private static button variable and we're saying cast a button from find view by ID so we're taking that XML file searching through this XML file and looking for the variable that Android has created when Android loads this XML file it creates that R variable and all the properties within the R variable so there's a subcategory in there called ID and then our buttons in there and you can tell that by looking at this where it says Android ID and we have this at plus ID slash BTN start there's your actual ID or if you're in the designer you just click here and there's your ID right here at the top so why does Android do it this way that is a very good question this has been a source of frustration for me since the day I started there's probably a better way of doing this um, my guess is it saves memory um, and that's the story I'm gonna stick with because it's been very frustrating for me all right so btn result so now that we have our buttons we're gonna say btn start set on click listener new on click listener and if you don't know what a listener is I really suggest that you go back and do some basic Java tutorials and then we're gonna say btn result I will explain it here in just a second but new on click listener um, Java doesn't really have um, I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail for this but it doesn't really have a very robust event system so you have to use classes and inner classes and all this other gobbledygook that in some languages it's just a one-line thing but in Java it ends up being this 500 page monstrosity um, so what you have to do is set a listener uh, which creates this anonymous I think that's called an anonymous internal class somebody correct me if I'm wrong this is the internet so I'm sure a thousand people will correct me but I think it's called an anonymous inner class so you're creating a new class called an on click listener and then it's in here meaning it's not actually declared as a variable it's anonymous you get the point um, but that is how you do that so we're wiring that up now I want to actually create another class here new Java class and we'll call this app settings and inside of app settings I want to say public static final string tag equal plus void realms what we're going to do now so we're going to go in here, we're going to say log.d, and we're going to say app settings tag. And we're going to say on start clicked. Copy and paste this. On result clicked. So now we have our two buttons. And let's just run this, make sure everything runs as we expect it will. Ooh, and we are not filtering so let's filter some of this nonsense out here make sure this starts as we expect it in the emulator 
which will take just a second here. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to actually filter this. And that's the actual log tag. The log tag we put in app settings as our static. There we go. Whoa, what's that? Must have been another thing I was running. Whoops. Got all confused there. All right, so now when I click, you can see on click, on result clicked. So we have our two buttons wired up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clear that, stop our app, and we're going to go into this customer. What do we call this? Button close. So we're going to go into customer and do pretty much the exact same thing. We're going to say private static button close. Oops. Probably help if I gave it a type, huh? I've been working in Python a lot lately, so I've been really forgetting to give things types. Now, you notice how it says, hey, what is this? Cannot resolve symbol button. So you hover over it, you hit Alt-Enter, and it automatically adds the import for you. So that's a lifesaver. And you also notice when you copy and paste things in, it'll say, hey, it looks like you're trying to do something, and it'll try to import those for you. So we're going to say button close equal button. And of course, we're going to do find view by ID, and we're going to say r.id. Ah, maybe beaten beaten button close maybe there we go and we're gonna say private void on close clicked why do I do it this way it's just my preferred method like I said there's a million different ways you can do this um, and we're gonna say button close not set on click listener new on click listener there we go, and we're gonna say, on click closed, boom. And then we're gonna say that. Now that right there is exactly why I moved our tag into a separate class, so it's callable all over the place. Um, I could have actually done it main activity and done main activity dot tag, but it's just the way I do things. So now we've got our two little guys here. And let's add in a finish here. So we got start, we got result clicked. Now what we need to do is we need to tell Android that we intend to do something. So we need to make an intent. So we're going to say intent, intent, and what we need to do now is tell it what we intend to do. So I'm going to go back into the manifest, and I'm going to get this big long string here and say this is what we intend to do. And there's actually a lot of engineering that went into that. It's actually kind of elegant when you think about it. So there's the intent. We're telling it exactly what we're intending to do, which is to open that thing. Um, to do that, we do start activity, and then we give it the intent. Now, intents can be used a for just everything. I actually use them for like uh, wiring up my own events and things like that. So in my, my listeners that I make in my classes, I'll send an intent right back, and you'll see why. So we're going to make a private static int. And we're going to call this uh, feed customer equal one. Should probably make that final. Now we're going to go start activity for result in our result clicked. Now you notice how this has got a little bit of a different syntax. Um, it wants to know, let me bring it back up here. Ah, of course, it's not going to do it now. It wants to know two different things. It wants to know what you intend to do. So we're going to give it an intent. We're actually going to make the same intent, sorry. And it wants to know why you're doing it. So we're going to start activity for result. We're saying what our intentions are. 
and basically what we're trying to do here. Um, the reason for that is we're going to do a control O. We need to get a on activity result. So on activity result has got three things. It's got a request code, a result code, and an intent. There's that intent again. So what we're going to do is we're going to launch this same activity two different ways, and you're going to see exactly what happens. And we're going to actually just uh, log app settings tag. And we're going to say, well, let's just copy and paste this. My brain is just like completely fried. I'm tired, hungry. Oops, I told you my brain was really fried. There we go. And let's look at our emulator. It's not running good. So we're going to fire this up bad boy up here and see what we can do. All right, so here is our activity, and we're going to click Start. Feed me. Now, if I click back, notice how nothing happens. I can even start this and I can click close. Nothing happens. It just says we closed it. But it's not firing this on activity result, which is what we want to do. So when you start an activity in the start clicked, on start click, sorry, um, you're just starting it. You're just firing and forget. You don't care what happens. Um, but when you click on the result button, notice how we're doing start activity for result, meaning we expect a result. We demand a result. So let's clear this out. Let's go back here. Whoops. Uh, we're going to click result. Same thing shows the activity. Now when we close it, you see on activity result, meaning it fired this guy back in our main. We can even go here and we can just back out of it and it still gets the on activity result. So we've got some rudimentary feedback here that the activity that we've started has now stopped. Now what we want to do is figure out what happened in that activity um, because we're going to do something. The customer is going to say, I love it, I hate it, go away, bring me water, something. But we want to know what happened. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to play around with this a little bit. And we're going to say log.d appsettings.tag. Let me close this little thing down so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to say and we're going to I'm going to actually intentionally crash this program just to show you how to use the debugger. So bear with me here. Um, you're kind of getting a two for one combo. I was going to do like a whole series on debugging, but I kind of want to introduce it early. Um, that way, if somebody has a problem, they know what to do. Um, so we're going to run our app here. And we're going to start. And we're going to actually crash this thing. Are you ready? Three, two, boom. Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, now I'm sad. Hmm. Oh, I know why I didn't crash. Hold on a second. We will make this thing crash. I will crash this. We're going to actually do an intent here. So we've got our intent, and we're going to put some extra data in here. So we're going to say put extra. And the syntax for this, of course, is you can give it like a, a name. Notice how it's string name and then a type. So we're going to give it, uh, we're going to say food and somebody, somebody, anybody. What are we eating tonight? Pizza. Why not? Everybody loves pizza. So we're going to put an extra and we're going to give it pizza. Now, what we want to do here is go back into customer. And before this finish, we want to actually tell it, hey, there was a result of some kind. So we're going to say set result and we're going to say result. OK, notice how there's result canceled, result first user, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're just going to say result OK. Now. Typically, this is when you would save some information to do. Save, save, save. And you would persist that down to a file or a database or something like that. You can actually even put it in an intent and send it back to the other activity. Um, 
But let's see if we can crash this. Sorry, I got sidetracked here. That probably still won't crash it. Let me do it again. Let's say uh, has extra food. This should crash it. If not, I'll be surprised. So we're going to close. Yep, there we go. App 3 has stopped. Now, why did this thing crash? This is like the programmer's hell. My thing just crashed. I don't know why. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually get a little quick mini tutorial in debugging. You see this little debug icon right here? We're going to click that. Click our emulator. Bring our emulator up. And you notice how it says waiting for debugger. You'll actually see this physically on your phone. Now the debugger is attached. So if we hit result and we close this, boom, now we have our stack trace. Fatal exemption main. Java lang runtime, failure delivering result info. You'll see that quite a bit in your errors. But why? Why? What happened? Null pointer exemption. Attempt to evoke virtual method, blah, 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 on a null object. And then it gives us the line and everything on where it happened. You just kind of got to follow it through. That's why it's called a stack trace. What's happening here is our intent is null. So we're going to say if So we're going to say data is null. And we're going to actually turn that into an error for our logging so we can see that beautiful little thing. So let's run this again. Get our emulator up and going. And I want to see that monitor. And result clicked. We're going to close this. Now, notice how we've got our debug messages we have activity result the request code is one the result code is negative one data is null um, notice how that line's red it's because we did that as an e or an error request code that tells you what we did feed customer is one the request code is one we can say 99 1 billion thousand sixty two whatever we want point is if you're going to have say five different buttons and all of them you want to start an activity and get a result that is how you would determine. You would just simply do a switch statement saying, you know, I want to know what the request code was. The result code is, well, you guessed it, the result here, the set result. So we're going to say if res result, wow, I cannot spell result code equal result OK, then and code equal oops what did we call that pesky little guy feed customer that's right so if we had a result of okay and the request was feed customer then let's do something here and let's do this actually let's not do that just yet let's just say We fed the customer. Customer's happy. Else, customer's not happy. And we're just going to say nope. All right, so some basic Java here. What we're really doing is we're saying, all right, launch this thing for an activity. I'm sorry, launch the activity for a result. That's how hungry I am. And then when it closes, we're going to get the activity result. Now, they're either going to back out of it, which is a cancel, or they're going to click close, which is going to save your data, do whatever you want to do, at which case we have successfully fed the customer. Otherwise, nope. So let's run this again. And bring up our monitor here. Let's close that out. So we're going to go result. And we're going to click close just to see what it does. And it says, the data is null. We fed the customer. Now, why is it still saying data is null? Because we haven't returned an intent from the customer class, which we'll do here in a second. Um, 
So we did feed the customer, meaning we know that we opened the customer activity and we got a result OK back because they actually clicked the close button. So what we want to do in the customer class here is we want to say, hey, there was an intent. I know there was an intent. So we're going to get that intent. And we're going to say if whoops, intent dot has extra, and we're going to give it a name of what was it, food. We're going to say long dot d app settings dot tag comma. I'll say thank you. Whoopsie. I love pizza. Well, I love, and then we're going to actually get the value here. Intent and in get extra. Now you notice how on the get extra, it's not get extra, it's get string extra or uh, get bowling, or there's all tons of them, but uh, nah. you can get, get it back as a boolean, as an integer, as uh, whatever really you want. Um, if it doesn't have that, we're going to say log e app settings dot tag big bold letters. The customer's not happy. Where is my food? Because I'm starving. All right, so let's look at the program structure here. We've got two different buttons. We have start and result. Start is just starting the intent. It doesn't, or starting the activity. It just does not care. It just is here, start it. Result, however, we've got an intent, and we're going to put an extra called food. We're giving them pizza, and we're going to start for result, meaning we want to know what happened. This is the, like the waiter walking up going, how is everything? You know, making sure you're not mad. And then when we get the result, we're going to kind of log some things out here, and then we're going to say, hey, is this intent null, yes or no? Um, is the result code okay and actually let's flip these around so it's a little easier to read we're gonna say did the request that we make equal feed customer meaning is that what we were doing up here and then the result code is it okay if yes we fed the customer otherwise nope we're in trouble so let's bring up our monitor clear that out stop that run this all right, let's see. What do we want to do first? We want to go result, and we want to make the customer mad. We're just going to go, nope. Customer's going to go, nope. And if we start this, notice how nothing is just on started because we're just starting and we don't care. So we're going to do result again. Let's close, clear all this out. Now we want to actually close this. We fed the customer, so we know that feed customer was called and the result was okay, meaning they actually clicked that close button. They said, thank you. Um, and it even says, thank you, I love pizza, because we were sending that. Now that's via the intent. Now we want to actually get some sort of result back here. So we're gonna take this set result, move it down here, and we're gonna say intent set extra, or I'm sorry, put extra. Hmm. Let's call this comment. Thank you. So that's the customer's comment. And we're going to take this intent, and shove it right back into set result. And let's go at into here. And if our data is not null, we're going to say has comment, has extra comment. Let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's see if they actually had a comment. Am 
my brain is like hitting, you know, critical mass here because I have not eaten and I'm like really starving. So this is how we're going to pass data back here. I want you to really understand this. We're going to do the set result. We're going to say, okay, but this time we're taking the intent. So we're taking the intent that we're just getting. This is the same intent that was used to call and we're going to push it right back through the set result. So if we look at this graphic here, the intents created, pass the system, blah, blah, blah. Activity B is getting that same intent. We're just going to pass it right back to activity A after we've modified it. A little bit of impromptu. I've never actually tested this because it's bad design, and I'll explain why here in a second. I just want to demonstrate that it is doable. So we're going to hit result, and we're going to hit close. And the data is thank you, meaning customer in the customer class is thank you I love pizza but then in our customer class we're putting an extra called comment thank you and we're printing that out right here by the data get string extra I hope that's not too confusing data is an intent so we're getting the string extra out of the intent remember an intent is something you intend to do with that intent you can put little extras in there and that's all we're doing is just grabbing those extras now that is horrible design do not do that and here's why when you look at your manifest you notice how these are completely different these two activities right here totally different with different filters different categories etc etc part of the Android design is that you can call an activity from another program that's how dialer works. So if you're on like Facebook and you want to call somebody, you hit the call button, it brings up your phone dialer. Facebook didn't recreate a dialer from scratch. It's actually calling the dialer activity from the Android system. Um, so you can make parts of your activities or parts of your program, these activities, open to the world. So you could say, hey, you know, this customer activity is really cool. Why don't you guys use it in your programs? And they can call that directly completely bypassing your main activity. So if we go back to our graphic here, they can call activity B and activity A never has a clue that even happened. Not a clue. Um, so part of what needs to happen here, if you go back here, you see right here this little comment to do, save, 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 save. The reason why you do that is because if you're calling that, that data is lost forever because it's not being returned. Now the calling application can do an on activity result and they can read the intent and things of that nature and that actually happens quite a bit. But you really shouldn't do that. Um, it's kind of a no-no. Um, the reason why it's a no-no is because you can lose information, you can forget to save it, it's just bad design by nature. I know I'm gonna get some hate mail saying that's the way it's designed, that's the way it's intended. That's why you have this intent data. But I'm telling you right now, for a professional grade application, do not do that. Actually persist it down to a file, um, something of that nature, a file, a database, which we'll cover in future tutorials. That way, you know, even if you're within your program and it crashes, you've still got that data. You didn't just poof, lose it forever. Um, now, that being said, in future tutorials, I will absolutely use this intent data, even though I've just told you not to do it. Because with everything programming, there's more than one ways to do it. So to recap, what we've talked about is how to take an activity, create an intent, launch another activity, and even how to get a result back from that activity. So you've kind of seen the full life cycle here. Um, whew, that was a lot of talking on my part. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. And uh, be sure to visit my website, voidrums.com. The reason being, glad you stuck around, is we have a Void Realms Facebook group. So if you go to contact, you can click on that. We have a thousand programmers out there that are really helpful. I use it as a resource every single day. Um, some of the folks in there make me feel really stupid because they're much smarter than me. Um, and I'll load the source code into the Android. Why is that at the bottom? I thought I alphabetized this. Anyways, I'll load the source code for this and all the other tutorials. One final note, this site is 100% funded by your donations. If you're a college student and you can't afford it, do not donate. But if you're like a big Fortune 500 company and I just saved you $10 million sending your people to training, then by all means, you know, send me 10 bucks so I can help keep the website running.